Uh, hey everyone, this is Paul Salvet out in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm the managing director of BB eBooks. Uh, today we're going to look at um, having a look at your EPUB and Mobi uh, eBooks. So uh, typically, uh, when um, clients ask us to convert their eBooks for them, we'll create uh, two files. One will be the uh, Mobi file, and that is for Amazon exclusively. And then there's the EPUB file which is for uh, just about every other uh, vendor. So the first thing you want to do to look at your EPUB file is you go to um, Adobe Digital Editions. Um, just Google it. Uh, you can see the URL up here. And uh, this is free software offered by the good folks at Adobe that allows you to uh, view an EPUB ebook. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that now. Okay, uh, for Macintosh users, uh, obviously you download that version, but we're on a Windows machine here, so we're going to go ahead and download that. Okay, and uh, what this will do is uh, this software program will allow you to, to view um, your EPUB ebook. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run it. Okay, so I'm installing uh, the program here, all pretty easy stuff. I'm sure everyone's familiar with that. Um, okay. All right. So now that uh, we're installing it, once it finishes installing, by default, it will automatically associate all uh, EPUB eBooks on your PC with um, Adobe Digital Edition. So all you need to do is click on it. This is going to be Wizard, the Wizard of Oz here. Um, what I'm going to do is just double click on my Wizard of Oz EPUB. Uh, we'll see how this looks. Okay. Great. Okay. So um, for EPUB eBooks, usually it starts off on the cover. There should be a cover page that you, uh, our clients provide us. And uh, taking a look real quick, this is kind of like the, the viewing area here. And on the left, this is what's called the uh, uh, metadata table of contacts, or technically speaking, the NCX table of contents. This allows you to navigate through your ebook uh, very quickly. So we can click on cover, we can click on title page, and uh, we'll take a look at our, uh, our title page here. Um, so I'm scrolling through. I'm scrolling through. One thing you'll notice is there's a table of contents. Why is there two table of contents? Well, uh, due to the way uh, e-reading systems developed, it's generally considered a good practice to have both a metadata table of contents and this is called the HTML table of contents. And this is actually embedded inside your ebook. These, so there's kind of like two table of contents. Uh, that's considered a best practice. And for our clients, we always make two table of contents. And you can click on these. These are just like regular hyperlinks. So if we wanted to go to chapter six, the cowardly line, we just click there. Okay. Now you want to make sure you go through your ebook have a look uh, you can go up you can go down um, you'll notice uh, there's like a page number down here I really don't like this because ebooks there isn't really pages per se um, the reason is uh, ebooks obviously are read on a lot of different size devices and uh, you know what could be a thousand pages on an iPhone would be just like 500 pages on an iPad or something like that you know so it's it's really kind of a, a moot point and it's just kind of a throwback to the days of print books. So going through our ebook here, um, sometimes uh, people say, hey, you know, I want to make sure, you know, this sentence and this sentence like stay on, on the same page. Well, that's not really possible because as you can see with a reflowable ebook, when you change the viewport, of your ebook, you'll see that the lines kind of start wrapping to kind of conform to the size of the viewport. And this is important. This is very important because uh, people are reading ebooks on a lot of different size devices. So it's necessary um, to properly encode an ebook that will work on, you know, everything from a PC to an iPhone to a Kindle Fire to whatever, right? So that's why um, ebooks, we say ebooks are reflowable. Okay, so I'm just going through. Now you can also click over here to kind of go from chapter to chapter. In this particular edition of Wizard of Oz, we use drop caps. Uh, that just means uh, the first letter, it's kind of big, bold, and set into the text like this. Now for certain vendors, like uh, for Smashwords, you can't really have drop caps. Um, but uh, for this one, we, we chose to have drop caps. And you can see there's a nice little uh, chapter ornament here, as well as a bar. 
Um, we can add all this stuff for you if you want. Just please let us know. Okay. So I'm scrolling through my EPUB here, and it's all looking pretty good. Okay. Uh, next thing we want to do, we want to take a look at our uh, Moby KF8 file. And this file will be for uh, Amazon. So the first thing you need to do is download the uh, Kindle Previewer from Amazon. So if you go ahead and just Google uh, Amazon Kindle Previewer, it'll be the first hit. You come to a page that looks like this. So I'm going to scroll down a bit. I'm going to see, okay, Kindle Previewer version 2.8 for Windows. Okay, that's us. Make sure you click the I agree to terms of use. We're going to go ahead and download that file. Now the file is kind of big, so uh, we'll wait a bit while this downloads. Okay, now that we've uh, downloaded um, our Kindle Previewer, we're going to go ahead and uh, open it up. Okay, and we'll get it installed here. Now, uh, a lot of people say, well, why, why do I need to download Kindle Preview? Why can't I just look at it, you know, on my Kindle? Well, the Kindle Previewer, uh, it's from Amazon. It's free. It allows you to see how your ebook will look on a wide variety of devices, including older, older Kindles, um, Kindle for iOS, meaning the Kindle for iPad, the Kindle for iPhone, and it, it um, since people will be uh, reading your Kindle file on a wide variety of devices, you want to make sure it looks good on all those uh, devices. So uh, what we're doing is we're just uh, installing Kindle Previewer right now. Okay, to install uh, your uh, Kindle Previewer software, just pick a language. I'm going to choose English. Uh, click the obligatory I agree. And uh, what this is going to do, this is going to install the Kindle Previewer software so we can have a look and uh, see how our Mobi file looks on a wide variety of different devices. And it will emulate um, the different uh, types of uh, devices, not just for Kindle, but also for, you know, um, Kindle for the iPhone, Kindle for the iPad, things like that. Okay, so now that we have uh, the Kindle Previewer installed, I'm going to open up a directory. It's usually under uh, your start menu in a folder called Amazon. And what this is going to do, it's going to open up the Kindle Previewer. And there's a first thing you want to do, you just click File, Open Book, and then you go and you find your Mobi file. Do not open the EPUB file. The EPUB file is not uh, customized for Amazon, the Mobi file is. So you want to make sure you're uh, previewing the Mobi file. Okay. So you wait here while it opens the book. And uh, right here, this is going to be how it looks on the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 inch. Now you can click on like different devices to see how it's going to look. Okay, this is on the Kindle Fire HD. This is the older model Kindle Fire. And you can kind of see how it's going to look. And you can uh, flip through the pages like this, okay, with these buttons. If you need to access the cover, uh, you click here. You want to make sure that goes to your cover. If you want to change it from portrait to landscape, you can click this right here. Uh, we can also view it on, like, Kindle for iOS. Let's see how it looks on our iPad. Okay, there we go. Uh, one thing you might notice... Um, on uh, these drop caps, you won't see it on the iPad. You also won't see it on older e-ink devices. There won't be a drop cap. The reason for that is the older e-ink devices and the Kindle for iPad don't support drop caps. So you'll only really see that drop cap on uh, the, 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 the modern Kindle devices like uh, Kindle Paperwhite and Kindle Fire. Okay. So you can kind of see this is like a standard e-ink reader, uh, so there'll be no color. When you click on the cover, it's just all grayscale. But uh, Kindle Fire is obviously a tablet, so um, th there will be uh, there will be color. Uh, one neat thing you can do, if you click here and you click on color modes, you can change it to night mode, and this is an option that readers have to change. And you want to make sure that in night mode uh, the text is showing up okay. Um, a big problem uh, with people who uh, don't uh, package their ebooks correctly is 
uh, they'll set like the font to be colored black. So when some a user shifts to night mode, it's just it, all the text disappears, and you'll get nasty uh, reviews, and you'll get a, a nasty email from Amazon saying you have to fix your ebook. But um, so make sure uh, on you know you can view it on Sepia as well, and just one thing you want to do is. Um, you can also check like different font sizes because some users like to read their ebooks in, in a bigger font or a smaller font. And you can just scroll through like this. Okay, and that's how you uh, view your Mobi file. And this will be the one that you upload to Amazon.